Welcome to the Rethink Vertical podcast, where we cut through the hype. This podcast brings you emerging aviation technology insight without the fluff, so you know where the industry is today to shape the future of tomorrow. I'd like to know a little bit about, you know, if you're, or, or not if you, because I know you do this, when you're, when you're sharing with other startup founders, um, maybe some of the mistakes that you that you made early on. Are there are there anything uh, that maybe you know? Not to put you on the spot. Let's say, are there a couple things like, man, I sure wish I would have done this a little bit different. It would help help us sort of scale a little bit faster. Or, um, uh, yeah. So I'll just open it up and see if there's something. Uh, and 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 for the for the folks watching this, uh, n- n- none of this was pre stage. Aaron did not know what I'm going to ask him. No, um, and I didn't really know. Yeah, I, totally, I totally did. So. No, that, that's good. That's a very good question. Um, we used to run this before pandemic. I'm hoping we start kicking it off again. We, the other founder who runs this is literally in the office door to us. Um, yeah. But there was a thing that we ran called Fail Fest, yeah. which would celebrate the failures of entrepreneurs and sure. you know come together and learn what didn't work and you know take that lesson and share with the rest of the community. Um, I know I got some good ones. I just I put them on the spot. I yeah. so the the one thing there. So one of our mentors is Warren Katz. Um, worked for him at TechStars. Phenomenal, phenomenal human being. Probably the most knowledgeable person on dual use and defense startup tech mm-hmm. on the planet. Um, he also has a wonderful T-shirt collection, which you should check out and probably <laughs> subscribe to. Right. Uh, if you know Warren, I. <laughs> um, He'll he'll probably throw something at me next time he sees me for that comment, but his he has the he's got three rules for mm-hmm. entrepreneurs that I think are the best three rules that I've I've ever heard for for how to go and start up a company, and through experience you'll learn that there are three very distinct rules, but those three rules are survive, survive, survive. <laughs> right. And they are distinct. I, I promise you that. Okay. Um, it, but you, you can only figure out the distinction if you've passed rule one and then rule two. Mm. Um, th- those are key. Um, but honestly, with one of the mistakes that we made early on was probably spending too much time with the wrong type of investor. Mm. And, you know, part of it is that I, I come from the Indiana ecosystem and it's a phenomenal place to, you know, grab talent, build a company, all of that. But it, it's no surprise. There's not a lot of capital here. Yeah. And the capital that does exist doesn't really know this space. Um, and it's just not a natural space that they're familiar with. Um, but we did, we worked very closely with, you know, the state and being able to get some grant funding yeah. to, to kind of offset that to a degree so that we can grow and help to build out this industry a little further, um, ideally in the state and see where it goes, but spending time with the wrong types of investors was something that we, we just took up a ton of time right. early on where we could have spent that time doing more BD work with government, with defense folks, um, almost anything. Yeah. And I think if the investors, you know, some of the investors would continue to spend time with us while not politely recognizing that this was, I mean, maybe they did and they just didn't say anything (laughs) because some investors will hold out and never say no. Yeah. But having a polite no this isn't for us is more useful to the founder than anything rather than stringing one along right. and we had a couple of those instances and we you know learned that the hard way but we you know reference rule one figured that out and then started spending more time on working with folks that have that defense or security need and mm-hmm. then working the pathways to go capture the funding that we could get under contract and then started building a company based on revenue as opposed to um, angel or pre-seed or venture yeah. funding. 
um, that frankly had an audience that didn't understand what we were doing. And in many of those engagements, it was an audience that really didn't have a desire to go learn mm. or to expand their their portfolio of the things that they look at, which I mean, th there's plenty of VCs that are strategically focused in a certain area, which is fine. But the ones that say that they're broad and will, you know, invest in <laughs> pre-seed to uh, series, you know, Z, but don't actually <laughs> specify what right. that means. Those were the ones that ended up costing us more time than anything. Well, no, I, pre I appreciate you uh, playing along and put you on the spot there. No, and I think that's super valuable. And I, and I can't tell you, I, I've heard more than a few times from um, founders looking either either from you know the Midwest or not on the coast, right? So they're 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 looking for funding in this industry um, that they they already have connections in those sort of like Midwest ecosystems, and that uh, that the investors, even the sort of regional VC funds, um, the the amount of time they spent on diligence was. was <laughs> And the number of meetings they needed, it's just, it's not sustainable. And 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 from you know, no, I've had I've had conversations with some of the investors about this, and it's you know, if they're they're value investors, they've been very successful, but the, but the but the rate at which these companies need to sort of you know do their 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 uh, their R and D and like just find investors and get to the no before if it's a no, it's a no that's fine and can move on. Because the number of people they need to talk to is is pretty massive to find folks that are comfortable investing. Uh, before a before a regional VC firm or an investor group to spend four months on diligence and then finally you know and to write a fifty thousand dollar check, it's like okay, um, you know I'm not going to turn it down, but man, that was a lot of work for fifty thousand dollars, you know. So being upfront with the investors, yeah, and vice versa. So I think that's. That, that's valuable. You got to know when, you, when, when to say, you know, guys, we've got to move on and, you know, we can't provide, we can't really help much more than we are. So either it, it makes sense or it doesn't. And if it doesn't, that's fine. We'll move on. But yeah, it's interesting. Well, and it's, you know, thinking about it from an investor's perspective, <clears throat> they're also burning their own time there right. in that case in which they could you know, they may like the founder. That's fine. Get to know the founder. Yeah. They may come back to you with another company in a few years because if they're successful, you know, or, or make right. an introduction to the founder, ask right. to, you know, keep in touch, be on the news. They're like, it's a no, but I want to follow you. And yeah. that's the key piece is that, you know, investors are betting on jockeys, not the horse. You can always yeah, shoot right. the horse. Right. Um, yeah. Probably shouldn't say that, but you, <laughs> you know, you they're burning their own their time there as well, which is also valuable. Yeah. And I think improving some of the efficiencies in the process is good for everyone uh, across the board and will end up for making better investments. And, you know, if they're spending four months in doing due diligence, just to give you an idea and a perspective from the investors that have done that, I would have completed an Air Force contract by then. Right. Like the phase right, one yeah, contracts and, would be completed and done. Yeah. And, you know, depending upon the one, probably about $75,000 of revenue into yeah. the company's coffers. Right. And that that's something that I think should be taken as a wake up call mm. is that the government is moving faster than the due diligence process <laughs> right. of the investors in some of right. those cases. Wow. And yeah. If you'd like to be a part of the U.S. Cluster Initiative community and get access to more of our content, check us out at www.uascluster.com.